okay. Let's see how long this goes for. So, yeah, uh, as I was saying, we probably couldn't hear. Um, this is probably the second van life video that I've done. This is the inside of my van at the moment. <laughs> it doesn't look very good, and it's it's far from finished. So that's why. But um, it's pretty miserable outside. You can see there. Uh, I'm in Sainsbury's car park in Coventry. I just went. I just. Um, uh, basically, I've just been to a Zen retreat um, in the Peak District about three or four days ago and for a weekend and then a couple of extra days at the retreat. We did a... we had a couple of master came over from Poland and my teacher came up from London up, up to the Peak District uh, to the Zen school there. And um, yeah, basically we, we had a good retreat. Well, I say good, it's... It's hard to put it into words what it actually is, you know, what can you say about Zen, anything you say about Zen, if you say it is something, it isn't that. So I've been umming and ahhing about whether to do this blog for a long time because, um, because why do something, you know, um, and Zen is uh, tricky because anything you say about it, you already... They say in Zen, if you open your mouth already, you've made a big mistake. <laughs> Which is a fantastic little sort of situation to find yourself in, I suppose. Um, so I wasn't sure whether to do it or not. I want to find someone to put this goddamn fucking camera before it actually does my head in. There, I put it on that. Yeah. So yeah, um, went to this Zen retreat uh, in the Peak District, and um, I was there for like three or four days. I stayed at the at the Peak District retreat, and then uh, came back down here. Well, actually, I went to see my cousins. This is the great thing about living the van life. Like I know there's probably a ton of van life blogs on YouTube. There actually is loads, but this is my one. Uh, for what it's worth and I just wanted to share like the freedom of living the van life right so I feel like it's a really free way to be because you don't have anybody to tell you where to go or what to do uh, I can wake up at whatever time I like do whatever I like and park up and sleep more or less within reason wherever I like and so it's, a, it's an extremely free lifestyle um, and what's more, if, if you live in a van, you don't pay rent um, and you don't necessarily have a mortgage, you know, so like with my type of work, I can work for, I work for about three weeks in a row, I do live in care work um, and I do work for about three weeks and then have as much, well at the moment I have as much time off till the money runs out and then I get back to work. So, but that can be up to like a month or maybe six weeks or whatever. Um, and it's an incredibly free way to be. Like, I love the freedom of waking up and thinking I could drive anywhere. Like, um, you know, I have friends up and down the country. I could go and see them if I want to. Or I can go somewhere totally new and go and discover, like, a new town or, uh, you know, go and see, like, see new places. Like, when we, I was in the Peak District recently, and it's absolutely stunning scenery up there, you know. Um, I was really tempted just to go and drive up into the Peak District. I've got a little wood burner, which I installed last year, last winter. You probably can't see it because it's hidden in amongst loads of junk and uh, electrical wiring and stuff, but that's my chimney goes up there. Now that's a little coal burner. I've got a bag of coal just down here. So this van, seriously, if I get that thing running, if I lift all those boxes out of the way, uh, it could be minus 10 outside in, in the past, I've had it minus 10 with the, my skylight completely open and in here it's been like 30 degrees. It's so toasty, it's lovely. And I've got this little, um, you can't really see it because it's in my carpet and stuff, but I've got a little stove here as well. So that's a gas stove, I've got my gas cylinder in a little cupboard down here. At the moment you might be able to see I've got a four foot fish tank sitting <laughs> in the middle of my van. It's taking up quite a lot of space here, but that's uh, I picked that up for my sister. That's a replacement fish tank. So that's going back to the Isle of Wight in a couple of weeks after my next Zen retreat. Um, 
And yeah, I've just sorted out my food into two boxes, which has been fun. Um, like stuff that I need to use quickly and stuff that lasts for a long time. I thought that was the most sensible way, uh, you know, to divide the food. So, um, so yeah, well, what was I talking about? Um, really living the van life and, and Zen. And that's what I want to make this blog about. I'm going to call it something like Zen and the Art of Van Life or something. Because, um, in a way, I had an interesting chat with a Zen teacher over breakfast the other morning. And he was saying to me, uh, people were asking me, they saw my van outside the Zen Center, and they said, oh, you know, you've got, you got a camper van, and asking me questions about li living in a camper van. Uh, <laughs> and uh, this guy, I said to them, it's great, fun, you know, there's so much freedom, you can do what you want to do. Um, but it makes me lazy, because I don't have to work, because I don't need that much money. I've only got, like, diesel, coal, food, you know, a mobile phone contract, what else do I need? Not much. So it makes me lazy because I don't work much because I don't have to work much. So, and um, uh, in Zen they say, you know, a good situation is a bad situation and a bad situation is a good situation. And I really don't think our culture in the main appreciates that. And what that means is if you have an easy life and you never have any challenges and you never have any struggles, um, you don't grow and you don't, uh, your character doesn't develop and also you don't, well not much, you know, and also you don't really um, have necessarily have a lot of empathy for other people because why would you? Because you can't identify with their struggle, right? So um, a bad situation, some of the times that are tough, you know, anybody, pretty much anyone that goes through a bad situation, often they'll look back and say, you know, that was really tough, but it helped me in so many ways because blah, 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 and I learnt this and etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So a bad situation is a good situation and a good situation is a bad situation. And I was saying to him, you know, about the van, or I was saying to them when they asked me, van life, it's, it's a good situation, but because of that, it's a bad situation. Um, and it makes me lazy. And then on the last morning when he had some time, this Zen teacher, uh, he said to me, you know, um, you say that living in a van makes you lazy. He said, I think you should become completely 100% lazy. I think you're not lazy enough. And I was like, what? Uh, and he said, yeah, because, uh, because what is laziness and what is discipline? Why have this struggle within yourself between laziness and discipline? Ah, I should do this, I shouldn't do this, right? So uh, I said, and he said, uh, look, you know, what is lazy? And I said, well, lying in bed till late in the morning, you know, that's lazy. And really I should be up and doing stuff and uh, instead I'm just lying in bed or something. And he's like, look, if you want to practice, if you want to come and sit in the Zen hall and meditate or or whatever, and that's what you want to do, then that's following your desire. So that's doing what you want to do. That's not laziness. And also sometimes it's hard to lay in bed until 10 in the morning. Um, I'm sure we've all had that situation where we're lying in bed and we can't sleep or whatever, or we're trying to get to sleep and we're, you know, being in bed isn't necessarily always lazy. Sometimes it could be hard work <laughs> to be in bed. And he kind of turned it on its head and he kind of just pointed out to me that, you know, in Zen they say, don't make opposites, right? So, good and bad, life and death, right and wrong. I just, I don't know about if anybody empathises with this, right? But I'm quite an activist in the sense that uh, I have a lot of subscriptions. Maybe I'm an online activist. I'm not, I'm not uh, attending too many marches here um, or stuff like that. But you, there are things that I do in real life as well. But... Um, it got to a point basically where I just cleared out my inbox because my inbox was getting flooded with requests for sign this petition to save the UK from Brexit or, you know, cancel glyphosate, stop Monsanto spreading poison on fields. Now, this kind of stuff in my mind is important, you know, we should be engaged in the world and Zen actually says, or Buddhist teachings say, meditation is not about on sitting in a room and becoming completely detached from everything in life. It's about being 
engaged completely with life. It's about being present right here, right now. So in your present situation in Zen, they say like, if you see a hungry person, feed them, you know? And so to me, if I see an email that says that some multinational is trying to spread carcinogenic pesticides on fields, I'm gonna sign that. I'm gonna donate two pound, five pound, whatever I can afford to try and help the world, you know? But at the same time, Zen also says, don't make opposites. And um, I watched a documentary from a very famous and well-respected Zen master called Zen Master Wu Bong, uh, with some of the other people from the Zen Center on the last night. And Wu Bong said in the documentary um, that he used to be an activist, like a really, a really strong activist. He was organizing marches. He was protesting against this, this, this. You know, and he was trying to make the world a better place, genuinely, really trying to make the world a better place. Um, and he said that uh, one day he was on a march and they were protesting against something, the government, whatever it was. And he had a moment of realisation where he kind of became aware that he was, in a sense, he was just like the people that he was fighting against, you know? This inner conflict, this is what I'm talking about, this is what the Zen teacher was talking to me about. Conflict is, um, do you want to be somebody, if you're bringing anger to this world, if you're doing something out of a sense of compassion is very different from doing something out of a, coming from a place of anger. And for a long time I've been very angry about a lot of stuff, right, that's happened in my life. And so I've had like, uh, I feel like I've had a real axe to grind with the world, you know? And so, um... So, is that a good place? Is that a good reason? You know, I ended up using uh, activism as a as a way to vent my own anger at the world, and that's not necessarily that much of a functional thing, you know, because you're just adding anger. Even if you think it's anger coming from a good place, you're still adding anger to the world. And uh, there's a Buddhist story actually told by Pema Chodron, who's a Buddhist teacher, about how uh, there's a guy in prison and he's watching the TV and he the sounds turned off and all he can see are the pictures. And uh, he's asking the other prisoners, look, what's this? What's on the TV? What are these people shouting about? And he's told, oh, that's politicians, blah, blah, in the Senate or something. Um, and, and then next, he, he sees some more angry people shouting about something. And he's like, oh, what's this? And they say, oh, that's Green Priest protesters trying to you know, rail against whatever the Senate are doing. And so, and at the end of it all, his comment is something like, oh, there's the same angry faces. I've learned that they all have the same angry faces. And so, I suppose what I'm trying to say is, I don't want to just have, I don't want to bring anger to the world, you know, and it's all right to sign a petition. I'm not saying we shouldn't try and affect, and it's very important to be engaged in this world, but notice where you're coming from as a person. We all know, I'm sure we all know activists who will, even if their cause got completely sorted out, they'll find another cause, and it's like they've got a personal grind, they've got a personal, that's bringing anger. So I think um, what I've learned, one thing I learned from this Zen retreat is to be mindful of where our intention comes from in life. Are we doing something out of anger, or are we doing it out of genuine compassion? And um, uh, yeah, so, but you know, every van, okay, so I'm gonna go back to the van life bit now. So. Um, every van life blog that I've seen is always talking about I always got a sense of freedom from it you know like these people are so free they've got such a free life um, and that's what I want to convey in this is the sense of freedom that I feel because I got here I was tired I woke up at like 7 o'clock this morning right I left the Zen retreat about two days ago in uh, the Peak District and then I drove to Stafford to see some relatives of mine um, I took here my cousin's dog for a walk down the canal and then I crashed out in my van and I woke up at like seven o'clock this morning somebody was banging around outside the van or whatever half past seven I think I didn't get to bed till late and so I've been awake since seven this morning and I got here by the time I left Stafford I did some emails and checked this and that left Stafford about ten and then drove down to Coventry here because I'm, I'm on my way to London because I have another Zen retreat next weekend as I said so for me this is like uh, you know part of what, what to do how to use this time I could go and see some more friends and I've got some paperwork to do here I'll probably get a little fire going tonight and get it warmed up in here so it's a bit more cosy but um, 
But yeah, that sense of freedom is what I really want to convey because I think in life, you know, how many of us, and I was did this for years as well, but how many of us do like nine to five jobs, you know, and it's the same routine and it's day in, day out. And really, human beings weren't necessarily designed for that. We were at least designed to have to go and hunt and find food or something and some variety, you know, not like sitting at a desk for 20 years or whatever. Like, is that really healthy for somebody? It's, it's nice that in this day and age, they say that everybody, we now have like more variety of uh, professions in our lifetime. Most people change jobs a few times and that's good. That's surely that's a good thing. Um, uh, so, you know, the sense of freedom is what I want to get at is that it doesn't have to be like that. You don't have to be stuck into a, I don't know, a mortgage or a, a, a renting a flat. Or there are options. We all have options, man. Uh, I went to Morocco about five, six years ago with a friend of mine in his camper van. We drove down through Europe and did some snowboarding and when eventually went to Africa. And in Africa, man, in Morocco, there's loads of people driving around. It doesn't matter if you're a little bit older. Some people think oh, it's a young person's thing, traveling, you know? Like, I'm in my 30s, late 30s. But there are people over there who are elderly, like, look like they're in their 60s, maybe, sometimes in their 70s, certainly 50s and 60s, right? Driving around in big, flashy motorhomes that are probably, like, 30 grand's worth of motorhome, you know? And there's loads of them out there doing it. And it doesn't have to be, life isn't what society tells you it is, and it isn't what you see on the TV or soap operas, man. <laughs> I have beef with soap operas. I think they're not healthy for your mind. 